In this video we're going to take a look at um, some more table features. Uh, if you select uh, a table you see the table tools up here with two tabs underneath it, one for design and one for layout. We looked at design in another video. We're going to look at layout in this video. Uh, layout uh, items have more to do with the structure of the table whereas the items on the design tab have to do with the appearance of the table. So uh, let's take a look. We'll start over here at the left. And we're going to disregard this first group here. Um, this second group we're also going to disregard. Uh, this lets you go in and uh, draw your table. Um, and you can also erase lines if you want to merge cells and stuff like that. Um, but I think there's easier ways to do both of those things. So. Uh, we're just going to skip them. You can check them out on your own if you want to. Uh, let's take a look at uh, delete here. Let's uh, first select a row and click on the down arrow for delete and it will let me delete uh, either a group of cells or rows or columns or the entire table and I'm just going to delete the row that I've got selected right now and uh, it's gone and I'm going to undo that to bring it back the way it was before and um, one useful thing here is uh, delete table. Um, if you just go in, let's uh, undo that one as well. If you just go into the table and you try to uh, delete all of the rows and hit the delete key, that's what you get. It doesn't delete the table, it just deletes contents. So I'm going to do control Z here to bring all that stuff back. So if you want to delete the actual table, uh, you can click up here and uh, right click and choose delete table and it will delete the table for you. I'm going to do control Z again to bring it back. Uh, or you can go to your layout tab up here and under delete you can go in and delete the table. Uh, you can also delete individual cells if you want to rather than deleting an entire row or an entire column. But uh, I don't think that's something that you're going to be doing very often. Usually you uh, delete either a row or a column in its entirety rather than just part of it. Okay, uh, let's do a control Z here to bring my table back. And we're going to look at a couple of other things here. So uh, let's say that I want to uh, insert. Um, I can insert above or below. So I want to insert, let's say I forgot to put a row in up there at the top. And I want to say, um, you know, Tom's budget. And we'll come back to that later. Whoops, I don't want to hit the return key. Uh, and let's say down at the bottom, what I want to do is I want to put, say, a row of totals down here. So I can go down here and I can put uh, totals. And likewise, if you forget uh, to insert a column, you can go back and insert a column on the left side here. I'm going to do a control Z to undo that. You can insert one to the right. I'm going to do a control Z to undo that. Um, you can also merge cells. So I'm going to take these up here and this is going to be like an overall title for our table. And I'm going to choose merge and that will make them all into one cell. And this is a place where you might want to actually go back here and use some of your styles. Let's make that a title style. And let's uh, center align it within the cell. And now let's go back here to layout. Um, Split cells will let you go back the other way. Uh, if I choose split cells here, it'll, uh, by default, it wants just to divide it in two. And uh, let's go in here and make it four, click on OK, and it takes it back the way it was before, although obviously this got a little taller because of the size of the font. I'm going to do a Control Z to undo that to get it back up here at the top. And uh, let me see some more things here on our layout tab. Uh, there's also an option to split the table. Now this one actually works a little bit funny. So uh, if I click right here and I choose split table, um, that doesn't seem to be what you would uh, expect to get. But if you click on the top part, you get this uh, little four-headed arrow for selecting the top table and if you go down here and click on the bottom part obviously that's going to be the bottom table and you get the forehead out and you can go up here and drag it down oh, I thought you could go up there and drag it down let's uh, let's try that again let's do a control Z here and it's 
try dragging that down a ways and let go and there we go and actually I guess I went a little bit too far here I kind of ran into the table down below let's see if we can drag that up a little bit and, and yeah, that doesn't seem to like that I'm going to do control Z and so it will let you uh, split a table up if you got a table down below here you're gonna you may end up with a little bit of trouble here uh, with the two tables running together uh, but if I let me see can I just drag this up one line here no I can't but let me put a few more blank lines in here and uh, you know this obviously seems like a bug in word I can't imagine why anybody would want it to work this way so if you put a few blank lines in there then you're probably good as far as splitting them goes um, let's uh, do undo a few times here see if we can get back to where we started there we go and let's go back to our layout tab and uh, let's take a look at a few other things we got some auto fit options here uh, let me first go and select the table that I want and then auto fit uh, if you do auto fit contents uh, it'll make everything just as big as it needs to be to accommodate the widest column uh, auto fit window uh, it will stretch it out from margin to margin and I'm not sure what the algorithm is for deciding the width of the columns here um, although it kind of looks like the width of the column is proportional to the widest item that's in the column so variance is a little bit longer than budget and actual and entertainment is the longest of all so this column ends up being uh, the widest or we can do fixed column width and that's not going to get us back to where we were before um, but we can get back to where we before by doing distribute columns if you choose that it'll make the columns uh, equal width uh, also down here I've got uh, an example where I've got one row that's taller than all the rest if I choose distribute rows up here it will take the current height of the table and it'll divide it up into one two three four six parts and make every row exactly the same size same height and you can also go in here and um, manipulate this it goes in tenths and if you want something in between like 0.25 you can obviously go in here and type in whatever value you want uh, well you can do the same thing for the width here and it looks like we've got uh, about six and a half inches an eight and a half inch wide piece of paper with one inch margin so at least six and a half inches across and um, so that means if I divide that by four I've got a little over an inch and a half. Let's try uh, 1.25 for the width of every one. And uh, 1.25 times 4 would be 5 inches. So uh, this should be about 5 inches wide. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some other things. Uh, if you want to change the width of a column uh, and just kind of eyeball it, you can get your two-headed arrow here. Uh, you can do the same thing with the height of a row. I'm going to do a Control z to undo that and uh, so you can do that and we're kind of running out of room here on the right and what you may have to do if you run out of room on the right side here is go all the way over to the edge here and stretch that one out um, another way to do that is to go up here and these little uh, dots that make up a square it looks like about three dots by three dots uh, you can go up there and drag and change the width as well now the one thing you need to be careful of when you do this if you have uh, a selection at the time you do this then the change in the column width only applies to the selection and I don't think that's what you want very often most of the time you want uh, the column width to be the same all the way down the table so you can go in here and you can tweak the width and the height uh, you can make sure the rows are all the same height and the columns are all the same width and uh, let's go here and make uh, this a little bit taller um, you've also got options for alignment and uh, you've got both horizontal alignment and vertical alignment and rather than have three buttons for horizontal and three buttons for vertical uh, it simply gives you all nine possible combinations let's go to uh, top left and uh, I may have to go back here and before I do this and let's try ordinary left alignment now let's go here and let's try center and then let's try top right and then let's try middle center and then let's try 
um, that was left center and then middle center and then right center and then bottom left and bottom center and right center. So we've got nine places where we can align the text. Uh, you also have the option of rotating your text plus or minus 90 degrees and there is no drop down here so uh, you just simply cycle through it kind of like uh, when you cycle through the tabs. Uh, we've got cell margins here. Um, you can uh, increase margins. Let me actually uh, let me cancel out of here and let's pull this back up away so okay and uh, now actually let's go down here and do this where we've got things that are all pretty much the same size. I'm going to do distribute columns and I'm going to do distribute rows so everything is the same and now let's go to cell margins here and uh, this goes up by hundred so I'm going to do a tenth of an inch on the top click on OK and you'll see some extra space got added up here on the top uh, you can also add to the bottom let's add a tenth of an inch at the bottom and uh, the white area shows you which side of the cell the spacing is on. Uh, you can also do spacing between cells uh, this is also something I don't think you're going to want to do very often let's go up to a tenth of an inch here click on OK and that's what you end up with and uh, that just looks kind of cluttered to me so I'm going to do a control Z here to get back to where I was before. Uh, you can also uh, do a sort uh, let's try uh, doing a sort here and I'm going to sort on column 1 and click on and let's cancel out of here let's select all of it first select the whole table and then do a sort and uh, tell it that we do have a header row there and I want to sort on column 1 and uh, the default is going to be ascending which is alphabetical order and EFMRU so uh, you can also sort on numeric columns. Let's go back in here and we'll do a sort on column 2 uh, which is labeled budget and its numbers and I want those in ascending. Let's put those in descending order. So we'll put our biggest budget item on the top. There is a header row. We don't want that included in the sort. We want that to stay at the top. Click on OK and now we have these in decreasing order. So you can sort the data on any column you want to sort it on. Uh, usually you're going to have uh, a row of headings at the top. Make sure you tell it that you have a row of headings at the top. Um, you can also, there's an option here to repeat header rows. If you've got a really long table, um, you may want to have the uh, first row of uh, header information at the top of every page but I don't think there's going to be that many times when you have that long of a table. Uh, you can also go back and convert your table to text and you can tell what you want the separator to be. Click on OK and now I'm back uh, with text there and uh, the last thing is uh, you can do a formula. Let's go back up to this one and I did put a totals row here and if we go back to design here we should probably you know make that look a little different and because we didn't choose any formatting here it doesn't change so uh, let's pick uh, let's pick the blue one here and now you see the bottom row does look different uh, it's not banded like the rest of them and does have this double blue line on top and let's go down here and uh, go back to our layout tab and let's take a look at the last thing uh, the last thing is you can do a formula uh, kind of like uh, what you do in Excel and by default the formula is to sum everything that's above this cell and uh, we're going to disregard these other options here. We're just going to click on OK and it tells me that the sum of all those numbers is 1,370. Um, by the way, this might be a place where you would want to use a decimal tab and, de and a decimal tab stop that is. So let's go to our tab stops over here. Cycle until I missed it. My computer's a little slow responding here. There we go. Then you get a decimal tab and let's say I want the numbers I don't want them way over there to the left like that so click there and uh, it automatically pushes these over now if you um, need to insert a tab character in a table cell normally when you're in a table you hit tab it takes you to the next cell on the table so what do you do if you want to align something uh, let's 
Okay, it automatically does that for us. But if I want to align something in here and it doesn't align for me, what you have to do is you have to do a control tab. And there we go. I do a control tab and it takes it over to the next uh, default tab stop. And I'm going to uh, do a control Z to undo that. And there we go. So uh, tab takes you to the next cell in the spreadsheet or in the uh, table. And when you get to the last cell, if you hit tab one more time, uh, it opens up a brand new line for you. And notice that because we said we had a tables or a totals row here at the bottom of the table, uh, this one is the one that's now that's formatted differently. It's got the double bar above it uh, rather than the one we had before. And uh, you can't just, well, I could do an undo there, I guess. Um, you can't just backspace and delete it, though. Um, but I can click. And then if you want to change the, the way that the cells table is laid out, if you want to change the structure, uh, you can also right-click. You don't necessarily have to go up here. Uh, if you right-click, you get options for inserting and deleting and, and so on. So I'm going to say delete rows, and it deletes that. And now this is back as the totals row down at the bottom. And that is everything on the layout tab. So that's what you need to do if you want to change the structure of your table. Use the items on the layout tab.